Hi, my name is Gary Cruz. I do videos on drones, gadgets, and technology in general. I'm currently in the project of putting a Blackmagic ATEM Studio switcher together. And for those who aren't familiar, it's a, a switcher for live streaming or live video versus something like you're looking at now, an edited video. So most of my videos moving forward will hopefully, hopefully be uh, done in real time. But what this allows me to do is, let's say, for example, if I wanted to show live drone footage along with the actual video footage of other cameras together, I can do that. If that's something you're interested, follow along. This is a unboxing video for a ATEM Studio HD build in a 4U flight case. Here are all the components that I'm going to be cramming into that little case. And I'm making this video separately because some people just aren't really into unboxing videos. But if this is your cup of tea, you're in for a treat. Now, starting off with the ATEM Television Studio HD. This was kind of hard to get hold of because in Amazon, in the US at least, they're kind of hold a, hard to get hold of. I guess this from the DVE store. And thanks to Jason, he saved me one and sent it right over. And it came in really good condition. Here's the um, nice graphics on the box. Your typical unboxing type of video. Now, one thing you'll notice is it's pretty minimal. You get this welcome packet along with the software. I didn't, I mean, I should check if I can actually use that SD card. Anyways, I didn't really bother using it because I downloaded the software online. And it comes with these four little feet. If you're not going to be putting it in a Terranex mini rack shelf like I am. So I'm just going to take that off. You'll notice that it doesn't come with any cables, which actually works out. I think, um, you know, cables are a personal thing. I need to get cables that are right for me and uh, reduces waste um, but just keep that in mind and I'll have links below all the stuff that you'll need well what's really nice about this is that uh, it uses a standard IEC cable and look at the USB cable here uh, input it's USB 2.0 now it doesn't have streaming like the old ATEM studio but it's just for control it also has a fan in this nice little enclosure you'll hear later on the um, the audio test of that I also like that this has some controls. Again, I, this is not a review. Um, it's just an unboxing, it's just a little bit close up of what you get out of the box. I'll go into more details in my build. So if that's something you're interested in, you know, stop watching now because this is just an unboxing. You know, speaking of unboxing, here's the HyperDeck Studio Mini. And what I like about this is that it uses SD cards. Now, keep in mind, uh, this is something I figured out later, is that, you know, you get the choice of some ProRes. It doesn't record in any compressed formats like H.264, H.265. I might get a duplicator later on if I um, can figure out to make some money out of this thing. I know, maybe I'm not the only one having this problem. But anyways, here's a simple unbox of that. Let's put this over here. Another welcome packet, again, with some software. Then I ended up just downloading online when I got it connected. But if you want to see it up close, here it is. You know, for those folks who don't download stuff. Now, what's really cool about this compared to the other version, too, is that essentially once you get everything set up, you don't need a computer to do the switching. That's just one thing to keep in mind. This also comes with a little stick on feet that you'll put on the bottom here if you're not going to be using an Iraq. Here's a little close up of that. But I won't be using this, so we'll just go ahead and just put this away. And I'll just stash this away in case uh, I ever need to upgrade later on. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just need to keep those boxes. All right, here's the close-up. has two SD cards. Um, those kind of work as a failover. You'll notice a couple uh, SD outs as well. I'll get into that later on. But it's really nice very nicely built. All right, here comes the rack shelf. Now, here's something I didn't have a lot of information on online. So hopefully this helps you guys out because I didn't realize that, um, you know, this thing doesn't have a lot of ventilation holes in it compared to some of the generic racks out there. But since 
as you can see the um, the ATEM Studio and the Mini uh, H Hyperdeck doesn't have any ventilation as holes in the bottom. I guess it really doesn't matter. The other thing too is that includes these face plates. So if you're not using the full rack, you're not left with some gaping holes in the front. And uh, these are plastic. You just screw them right on. Here's a little close up of the rack itself. Nicely built. Made out of metal. It just fits right in there. So I think I ended up putting that on the right side, but I was just checking the alignment of the holes. Now the holes, the screws actually work with the front and back of um, underneath the device. So I'll just have to flip this over to screw these together. All right, so just uh, align these right up here. And you notice that there's a hole in the front and back for each device, at least for the uh, one, two for the HyperDeck Studio Mini and four for the ATEM Studio. All right, next up, this little mini PC called the COD Lix. <laughs> um, it's also known as the B-Link on Amazon. I'll have a link. Now this little, little mini PC doesn't have a fan, but it has enough processing power to kind of act as a switcher. I used it to update the software and also I might even use it to load some Photoshop to make some simple lower thirds, but it also acts as a ghetto casting device, meaning, um, you know, if someone connects to my network, they can use AirPlay or Chromecast to send their screen over. What's interesting, it came with two short HDMI cables, but only has one HDMI input. Has a, a Vista mount as well that I didn't even bother using. So here's a close up of the, the LAN, which I used inside with you hooking it up to a, a router that you'll see later. And also comes with the Wi-Fi cable. I mean, antenna, which I didn't use. It has an SD card for expansion and two USB ports as well. Those are USB three. I'll go into more detail in my build. Now here's a APC power filter. The specifics are again in the description. And a lot of people were using the Furman, which I also own, but I wanted to get a little bit more fancy with this. This has some delayed inputs, but essentially what that does is that uh, it delays each of the powering on of devices. But having a power filter also deals with places where you might have some dirty power, meaning that it can add noise. So each of the um, plugs essentially has its own circuit. Uh, here's a little close up of that. And uh, here's a close up of the rear. And these are delayed and also has um, a digital filter associated with these. So hopefully that removes or it takes care of any ground loop hum that may be coming in through audio or maybe interfering with the video as well. Uh, here's a close up of the front. And uh, what's nice is shows the status, it shows the um, usage of the power. I'll get into the details of that when we get that all powered up in my build video. But essentially to turn it on, you have to hold that power button and the up button. Now I saw in here to record YouTube channel. He was using some uh, fans. I uh, went a little bit uh, fancy and decided to put this on my actual rack. Now the cool thing about this, you have a couple models. This one's the exhaust version, which blows out, uh, you know, hence the word exhaust. And uh, it's also temperature controlled. I also got this little brush thingy that uh, kind of covers up the holes, but I have some additional, you know, room to expand in case I didn't use the patch panel. And I'm going to see if I could route the power cord out of that. In fact, you know what? The power cord actually doesn't fit out of that. So uh, hopefully I'll figure that out in my build. But any additional cables that need to go into my case can go through there. Now here's the patch panel from Redco Audio. I drew this all out in Photoshop, but check this out. Look at all the labels on there. No sticky labels. So professional. Now when I got this built, uh, look at these Ethernet uh, jacks, the Cat6. Their patch accidentally selected the patch panel. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. So I sent those back and they uh, sent them back with the correct uh, pass through. So just keep that in mind when you're building it. Now here's the SKB 4U case. I decided on the this travel version. It's it's a shallow one. You'll see the exact specs 
either on the graphic on the lower thirds, which I'll probably put up right now or earlier. Um, in case I ever have to travel with it, I could, it, it's, you know, high impact grade plastic, I guess. Nice and secure latches. And uh, this is the shallow version and it has mounts in the front and the back, which works out for me because I'm putting um, all the controls on the front for the ATEM Studio HyperDeck and the um, and the screen in the front, and then the back will be the fan, the power, and the um, and that brush brush face. It also came with uh, some screws that I didn't really use because I bought some really high grade ones. So here it is powered on. Just going through a test of the power, making sure everything works out, and here's the test of the audio. So you can hear a little bit of the fan noise and the um, a temp starting up averages about 37 or so decibels but again this is right beside it not that loud let's check out the fan volume as well now Procool has a couple of different versions and uh, this one is one of their quieter ones. What I like about this is that since it's temperature controlled, you can program it to turn on when it hits a certain temperature. Now, for those outside of US, you can also change that from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Now, here's a Decimator HD Cross. Uh, I haven't quite figured out if I'm going to need this yet, but this is kind of, you know, what they say is a Swiss Army tool because the ATEM Studio, like the previous version, needs a consistent input. So if you standardized on 1080 you know p30 all the um, inputs need to match that uh, resolution and frame rate so this is just in case someone has a device that um, i need to input and get onto the switcher or if i need to distribute it out to multiple sdi devices um, it's quite a pretty handy tool it also comes with these really nice matching uh, components and so here's the locking 12 volt power supply that comes in handy in case you know you're in a crowded environment you don't want something somebody accidentally kicking out the um, the power so it's pretty secure there and uh, you have the HDI in and out those can be passed through and there's some conversions that it can do from HDI to SDI and vice versa it's uh, made of metal so it's a nice heat sink there and uh, I'll go into more detail as I put the build together, but overall looks pretty good. This is version two of the MD Cross. All right, next up is this Asus router. Fast, easy setup. All the paper that I didn't even bother reading and also a CD. Again, all the updates just came online. Now, I'm using this for two things. One, to interconnect all the devices via ethernet. You know, so the ATEM, the HyperDeck, and even the um, display, the Duo, has Ethernet and also the computer. So um, I'm, I'm going to use this as a separate network so I can control it. And also, you know, if I plug into a in an environment uh, in another facility, I'm not going to use their IP addresses. So uh, you'll I'll have a separate network and I'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of that. Now check this little camera out. It has a Panasonic two thirds sensor and it looks really good in low light. And I saw that a couple people were trying to use GoPros. This is a low cost version that provides a really high quality video. It comes with this little bracket, which actually didn't fit. So I called Amazon and they, uh, they hooked me up because you know, they could replace it anyways. Uh, I'll go into details when I um, actually use it more, but I'll use that for tight shots or, you know, wide angle. After I unboxed everything, I made a huge mess in my living room and I'm going to try to, I just wanted to show that it looked, my wife was making fun of me. She said it looked like the UPS post office dropped by and just dropped off a bunch of boxes. But I just think it's kind of funny showing the behind the scenes of all this I need to clean this up as I put this all together. But 
One thing I learned is that I was missing some cables and missing in some of the things that weren't the right sizes. And um, I'll go over all that. And so for you guys who are looking to do your own build, you can learn from my mistakes. And here it is kind of like in the process. So if it's something you're interested in, subscribe and I'll definitely go into more details about the build. Thanks for watching. Yeah. 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 Yeah.